So next thing we're gonna do on this clock is we're gonna make this ratchet right here. This ratchet is what allows you to wind the main barrel. And if you can see, uh, here is what they call the click spring, and this is the click. Uh, the design for this had a smaller ratchet and less number of teeth, uh, so I modified it a bit. I think a uh, larger ratchet uh, will be beneficial given the power of this mainspring. We'll get a bigger moment uh, on this, so it'll be less force on this click spring. And also, I like more teeth uh, because when you wind it, um, you get better fidelity um, and less aggressive clicks as it goes around. So what we'll do first is we'll cut the blank on this. I'll show you what operations we're gonna do, and then I'll come in, and I think what's interesting in this video is how we uh, cut these teeth. First thing I usually do is turn off uh, everything else in Fusion 360 so we can just look at the part that we're gonna work on. Uh, so I'll go ahead and finish that, and then we go up and we go from design uh, to manufacture. Now I've already gone ahead and set uh, the tool pass for this, but I'll step you through of exactly what we're gonna do. Uh, the first thing we've gotta do is get out the blank. A lot of times you'll cut this on a lathe. I like doing it on the CNC, because uh, I can put more features in the blank, and then all I have left usually to do is cut the uh, teeth. This is the same basic thing I do for a wheel or a ratchet. Um, this will show you how we do a ratchet, but it's the same operations. When you see one thing I put in the design is this little uh, 10,000 step. That's as we wind the clock, we don't want this ratchet to rub on the frames and scratch them. So it'll allow a nice uh, look underneath the ratchet as it goes around. You can't see much of it, but you are able to see a little bit behind where these teeth are. So we want to keep them free of the frames. So the first thing I do is I go in and I cut a contour. So we'll come down with a end mill and cut a contour uh, to clear off and create this 10,000 step. Then we'll come in, I'll cut out this square hole, um, but you'll see I'm coming in at first to be somewhat aggressive with a 125 end mill. And then I come in and there's a way you can go into the tool pass, and I'll show you this over here, of come in and do what we call rest machining. And here I say bef the operation before was a 125 diameter end mill, you can see here. And we're going to come in and we're going to cut this with a 1 16th end, end, end mill. And then Fusion smart enough to only cut uh, the areas that weren't removed by the previous tool. So very uh, good feature, uh, very efficient in making sure you're only cutting what you need to cut. And then I'm coming around and I'm taking a contour. This contour I based off a sketch that I made around 10 thousandths larger than the OD we're going to finally come with. So this way, I'm going to come in with tabs. If you can see here, I've got tabs machining. And that's also easy to do in Fusion, is when you come in here, there's a nice selection, you just hit tabs. And if you turn that on, it'll come in, they'll put what number, and you can see here I'm saying every 0.8 uh, inch. But I did that, so we're going to have four tabs that'll hold this piece in place as we're cutting it out of the blank. And I came in with an extra 10,000, so then I'll mount this on a mandrel, um, clean it up on the lathe, and then put it in on the fourth axis. We'll show you how we program that uh, to come in and finally cut the teeth uh, on the CNC on the Tormac. So that's all we've got to do. Um, I've got this transferred over into the Tormac. I've got the plate in place. I've got it zeroed out. So we'll go ahead and cut this blank out. So now we'll look at how we program cutting the teeth. So what I like to do is I've got a pretty easy way to do it. I draw a cylinder. I draw that cylinder the diameter that I made the part. I do this outside just because I usually have this one setup and I just keep repeating it for different size wheels, for different size ratchets. And, you, and I'll show you some tricks with a ratchet, uh, which makes it a little bit interesting. So the first thing is to draw everything in. Uh, the circle's there, but you see this offset I put here? These are lines that I'm going to want to use as a trace command when I make the cutter go across. So the cutter is going to trace, the center line of the cutter will trace these lines. I make two lines because I like to come in one cut and then another pass, so I don't cut the whole tooth at one time. I take it a little bit slow and do 25 thousandths you can see one time and then pretty much the other 25 thousandths the other time. 
The other thing I like to do is this is kind of like bookkeeping of how I keep track of everything. So you can see this is basically an equation. Nice thing, nice thing about fusion, you don't only need to put in, you can put in more than just dimensions. So I like to put the equation so I can remember what's going on here. And I'll walk you through this. The ratchet cutter that I'm going to use here from PP Thornton's has a 1.112 diameter. Now that diameter is of course a diameter, but we're sitting on the center line here, so we need to use the radius. So all we do is divide it by two, and it's gonna set this thing, it's gonna offset it the radius of that cutter. But if we offset it just there, it's just gonna hit the edge. It's not gonna cut anything. So the distance that I know, the distance of these teeth from my drawing that I made before is 0.047 inches. So we wanna come in 0.47 inches. This is your, you're gonna be your total depth of cut. On a wheel, that's usually all it is because you're cutting right on the center line. But if you remember here, I'm going to cut off the center line. So I'm going to need to come in. I'll show you how I, I do that sketch. I'm going to need to come in another nine thousandths to, to deal with that offset. What does that mean? Well, if you see here, to get the undercut that I want around a five degree undercut, why do you put an undercut? You make sure you put an undercut on a ratchet so when the click engages, it's never gonna wanna slip off. It really grabs it. So this five degree undercut, a mathematically equal to 0 0.108 offset. So this, what I did is I copied that up 0 0.108, but when you copy that up and you can see right here, you need to come in a little bit further. You go and you inspect this and you measure, you know, how far is that? And I could put that there, and you can see over here it's 9,000. So that's all that's about. You come in an extra 9,000. Now let's step over to the manufacturing tab. This is shows pretty much how easy it is. First thing is you execute a trace command. That trace command, you come in and you follow these. They show up as chains, but I tell it, here's what I want it to do. I want to come in and cut the first line, this line first, and then come in later and cut the second line. So you just order it the way you pick those lines up. And it's as easy as that, but a trace will just give you one cut. You know, we need to make, on this design, we need to make 40 teeth. And that's where a circular pattern comes in. You put on top of it a circular pattern. You can see here, you just enter number instances, 40. You want it to be 360 degrees to wrap all the way around the part. And look at what we get. We get 40 cuts that are going to walk around the part. Now, if we simulate this, you can see what's going to happen and you can watch it if you did this thing right, and you'll see the cutter will slowly walk around and it'll cut the whole wheel the way we want it to cut, the ratchet in this instance. Now you'll see in the way Fusion 360 simulates, it looks like the machine is moving around the part, but that's not what really happens. The part is gonna rotate when it writes the G-code. That's all it is. Now we can move over to the machine I've showed you how to cut a wheel before, so I won't really focus on that. I thought it would make sense to step through and look at the way I use Fusion 360 to program a fourth axis for cutting a wheel, for cutting a, a ratchet, or any other thing you want to you wanna make the circular on a fourth axis on a, uh, on a part. Real useful tool, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. But we'll get to cutting, then I'll just show you what the finished product uh, looks like when we take it off off the CNC. The setup. I've got the ratchet cutter in place. Uh, we've got the uh, part mounted and centered on the A-axis. I've already made sure that's concentric. And I just wanted to show one thing is this die cam. So this die cam is a great product, very uh, convenient to use. You paint the outside of this part for the reason as we cut it, we like to go and check are these teeth getting cut to the right diameter. So you want to basically make that disappear as you're cutting this uh, ratchet. It's easy to just paint it on and to remove it uh, quickly comes off with uh, simple alcohol. Um, so real convenient, a good way to indicate scribe parts, etc. Uh, but just thought we'd show that. So I'll get cutting this part um, and then we'll uh, show what it looks like after. Okay, so we'll look at what we have now. So you can see here, uh, we've got the ratchet cut and you can see the die cam. I haven't cleaned it at all. Um, so you can see some remnants there, but where the teeth are, uh, it's clean. So we hit this thing uh, right at the right uh, distance. All the math uh, worked out well. We've got 40 teeth um, that worked all the way around. So you can see the use of uh, Fusion 360 and then how we can program uh, the G-code uh, works out extremely well. 
you see the slight step here um, that'll be useful I've got a little bit of cleanup um, on this square hole uh, but it's a nice way a lot of what you usually have to do is a lot of filing um, and it's tough to get this accurate uh, but what I've got here is a, a square hole that I can uh, come in later with a file and really get that thing fit so it runs at the end of this uh, arbor and if you see it uh, fits on there pretty well you know it, it's almost almost there remember I cut this with a slight taper if you remember in the last video so it doesn't get all the way down so I got a little bit of cleanup but that's the right amount I mean it's very minor filing I'm gonna need to do uh, I'll put it back on the mandrel both ways to uh, later polish this there's a slight burr uh, where that cutter comes through it's hard to see here but you can see a little bit coming through a little bit on the edges what that burr is but that'll clean right up uh, when I put that back on the lathe with a mandrel uh, but we've got a good part um, I'll make the click the click's got to be made out of steel and hardened and I'll make the click spring that click spring I'll probably show on a video uh, because instead of the normal way of bending it, I'll try to machine that all out of brass and get the pretty close to the final shape uh, made. Uh, we'll see how that works. Not always easy, but that'll probably be the next thing I do. But we're making progress. Uh, the skeleton clock is uh, coming along. Once we get this in place, uh, then we'll go over work on the pendulum and we'll make sure this thing and the train works and then the interesting part of working on perpetual calendar will come later so this is a real interesting project i hope you're enjoying it uh, i hope you continue to watch and you know please comment um there's a thousand ways to make everything so if any good ideas or better ways to do things love suggestions and if you can subscribe i'd really appreciate it so take care and we'll see you soon